So hi, welcome to another episode of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking about motor protection, control cabinet builds, and today we're talking to John Burns from Siemens. John, would you like to introduce yourself to us, please? Sure. Um, again, thank you for this opportunity to, to talk with you today. Uh, again, my name's John Burns with Siemens. I'm an application consultant for the electrical products group here at Siemens. Uh, I manage a group called the Application Resource Center, and I'm also a target market manager for several uh, target markets uh, here in the U.S. as well. Great. Okay, so let, let's get straight into it. So motor systems are obviously at the heart of uh, the manufacturing environment, and, and downtime is essentially money. But but why is it important to rely on the, the quality of, of build uh, within cabinet control? Quality really plays into uh, the, the equation a lot on the end user again with the downtime again if it's poor quality and, and institutes a failure you have that time to diagnose the the failure and so the longer that time takes to diagnose the longer it, it, it impacts your downtime and the poor quality products a lot of times also don't provide the necessary diagnostics to show right. which products just failed and so as you increase the quality of the products, which will reduce uh, inevitably the, the, the failure time, it will also reduce your downtime to diagnose what that, uh, what that problem is. So it's kind of a twofold uh, equation for the end users. Uh, for the panel builders, using quality components, a lot of times will offer consistency across lines. And so as you use different size motor starters, if you're not using quality products, a lot of times they're going to mount differently. The accessories are going to be different. Uh, there's going to be a lot of aspects to those starters uh, that will impact over and above just the quality uh, piece of it. OK, can you just maybe expand a little bit on the different types of switching and protection components that you would find within a modern control cabinet? Sure. Um, Again, for motor starters, uh, we'll provide both the switching and protection function uh, for motor applications. And here's some typical components uh, for those applications. Now, again, every motor starter has four distinct functions that it must achieve. The first one being manual disconnect. And so this product here, which we refer to as our motor starter protector, offers that manual disconnect function here with this rotary knob. The section, second function that a motor starter must pertain or uh, contain is short circuit current protection. Yeah, now you yeah. could do that with fuses, you could do that with a circuit breaker, but by having short circuit protection also in this product, now you're combining multiple yeah. functions into one product. Okay. Uh, the third piece of that, again, for motor applications is the overload protection. You must meet, uh, be able to protect that motor from excessive current over time to either uh, have too much current on the wires or damage the motor itself. And yeah. again, this motor starter protection uh, device offers that function as well. So you have three of the required functions all in one device, the disconnect, the short circuit protection, and the overload protection. The fourth piece of the puzzle is the control piece. And that's where it comes into play with for motor starters is a contactor that's yeah. rated for motor applications. And so these two components will make up a motor starter, okay? Now, you could have individual wires to connect these two components, but one of the things we do here at Siemens is we offer a mechanical link module that is also the electrical connection for the devices as well, okay? And so with the mechanical link module, it has these little tabs on the bottom that will lock into, say, the protection device and now be able to also mechanically connect and electrically connect the contactor, okay? And so now when you have these two devices mechanically connected, okay, and electrically connected, yeah. it's a much more secure quality built type design, but it also saves space and wiring time by having that link module uh, in place with the system. Yeah. Okay. So we've taken the requirements for the motor starter and added some benefits to it 
based on how you're going to connect them and by combining multiple functions into a single device. Yeah. So obviously plays um, with the, the fact of good mechanical connection, but in terms of reducing the, the cost of installation, that, that's really significant because if you imagine you're doing that on multiple control cabinets, if you're saving on wiring time alone, that's a huge financial saving, surely. Absolutely. For the for the panel builders, wiring time is is really important. Again, in their business, you'll have a local company that needs these panels and they'll put those panels out to bid to various local panel shops. If one panel shop has a distinct wiring time advantage over the others based on the te technology that they're using, two things are going to be to their benefit. One, again, they're going to reduce a lot of cost out of the build of yeah. their panel that now they can be more competitive, you know, on their bid. But also, if say the, the end customer needs, you know, 20 panels, how long is it going to take you to build those 20 panels? If you're now in a competitive bid and you're going to say, okay, my panels are not only 10% cheaper than my competitor, I'm going to also be able to deliver them 30% faster. Yeah. That gives that panel shop a distinct advantage to be able to win more uh, business. And now they overall will win more business, you know, on a monthly basis going out their door uh, for their uh, for their benefits. OK, what would you say were some of the, the key considerations that engineers used to need to bear in mind when selecting the right kind of switch and, and protection components, you know, for various applications? What what would they be looking for? Again, what's what's key for a lot of those, you know, the panel builders is the wiring time, the panel space. Do the components uh, 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 meet uh, the national regulations for, say, National Electric Code or the specific industry that they're going into, say, a robotic application or a conveyor application, things like that. Um, those are really important uh, aspects. Also, as you, uh, any panel, a lot of times it'll have different size motor starters uh, in that panel. And what kind of consistency across different size motor starters does the um, manufacturer offer that panel shop? Again, right. consistency also reduces uh, assembly and wiring time uh, for those panel shops. And one of the advantages of with this, the Siemens design, again, this size starter here is our smallest uh, uh, frame size, but this will go up to say a 10 horsepower motor. Our next size up system is now this assembly. This will go yeah. up to a 25 horsepower system, but you can see side by side, they're very similar in size, okay, and structure. Both have that link module that I was talking about, so both will have the ability to save the assembly and wiring time uh, for that system, okay? Yeah. One of the things that we also push on the wiring side is even though in the US the most popular termination is the screw uh, type termination, another termination is also available. It's very popular in Europe, but it's also uh, gaining popularity here in the US, and that's what they refer to as a spring or a cage clamp system. And now the assembly of this, it's much, much quicker than even this assembly. Yeah. It's a pop-in type connection that's very, very secure and with the spring clamp type connection, it's much more secure over time for the end user from a vibration standpoint. Anytime you ship starters or any components to the end user that have screw connections, the first thing that happens when that control cabinet shows up at that end user site is the electrician will come in with a screwdriver and tighten down all of these screws oh, yeah. because they all loosened up during uh, shipment. Yeah with the spring clamp connection you don't have that issue okay also from a replacement standpoint they come apart apart much easier uh in the field to be able to have a quick replacement and as you can see with the two sizes here which are the same two sizes as this lower system here the 10 horsepower and the 25 horsepower we've maintained the ability to do the, the link connection yeah. And we've maintained the, the complete sleek uh, appearance of being the same product line. Yeah. So I, I can see that in, in terms of 
panel space alone between between the two different ratings that you're you're not really taking any more space than is absolutely necessary and you're right what you say with the the spring termination being popular in europe we're seeing quite a lot of uh people crossing over into spring termination uh, technology just based alone purely on the mechanical abilities but also that's time saving for installation as well yes as people give it a shot and look at it um i haven't seen a customer yet that has gone back to screw connection once they've once they've tried that that clamp connection um uh, they move forward with it quite quickly it's just trying to get that person comfortable uh, with that new technology. Okay. One of the things that obviously for for panel builders or panel shops is making sure that they apply the correct um, uh, standards, for example. So what is it they need to be aware of for motor control and overload protection components? Well, the, the, the main standards here in the US is the Natural Electric Code, which is NFPA 70. Uh, another one for panel builders for control panel design is UL 508. Um, as well as UL 489 for circuit breakers. So uh, cabinet uh, builders have to be cognizant of what those requirements are so that when a uh, OSHA inspector comes in yeah. and looks at his panel design overall, um, there's no issues uh, coming in. So that means manufacturers have to be able to provide a, uh, a, a quality component that meets those standards. And that's with these components again, they are all certified for US usage, you know, from a UL standpoint, from a National Electric Code uh, standpoint for our customers. And we have all the supporting documentation as well as the necessary labeling on all of the, the products so that we prove to our customers and more importantly to the OSHA inspectors that yeah. we're complying with those standards. Okay. And just from the, um, if we're looking at uh, protection and switching components, what what should we be looking for in terms of evaluation for those in the control cabinets? What really should panel builders be looking for? Again, back to their their needs of of saving wiring time and saving you know panel space. Um, I talked earlier about how the link module on this system you know saves the wiring time and assembly time for this assembly. Okay. But now think about the, the three phase power wiring. Say if I had multiples of these starters and yeah. I've got to bring in that three phase power wiring to the top of each of these uh, individual starters. How can I do that with a cost effective solution? One of the solutions that we offer uh, to be able to do that, which is very popular in the in the in the US is this comb bus bar system. And so you'll have a feeder. Uh, connection to bring in three phase power one time and now you can have different combs for different size starter assemblies okay. that will bust that three phase power going across. So again for the panel shop it offers them a very cost effective quick way of wiring uh, multiple starters together and as you can see here's you know two different size starters again the 10 horsepower and the 25 horsepower uh, rated starters sitting side by side. Yeah. And so, you know, we can do that with our starters uh, going across. And this comb bus bar system is rated at 63 amps. So you can see we can do quite a few of the smaller starters uh, side by side uh, with this system. Okay. So one of the advantages of maybe using a modular system, start a relay and contactors, overload protectors from the same manufacturer. What, what are some of the advantages of, of doing that? Because I, I don't, necessarily think a lot of people um, give that as much time and credence as, as they should whereas you can use one modular system from one sub manufacturer how does that benefit the the panel builder would you say well at Siemens we've put a lot of thought into the modularity design of the product family for our for our motor starter line and and it shows in a, in a bunch of areas first off as I just showed here with the the cone bus bar system you know, that's one way of, of doing that busing system, which is great for the panel shop. But think about if you've got four starters side by side, all mechanically linked with this bus bar system at the end user, and all of a sudden starter number three goes down. To be able to replace that middle starter, you've got a lot of disconnection that has to happen 
with three yeah. phase powering um, to be able to make that repair. And one of the things we've brought into our modular design is additional bus systems, such as this one here. And so again, both size starters, 10 horsepower, 25 horsepower, sitting side by side. But now with this system, I have an easy plug-in module with a backplane providing that three-phase power. Yeah. So again, for the panel shop, it's quick assembly and very easy to design in, kind of like a Lego system, to be able to uh, put in modular uh, multiple starters. And this bus system is also rated at the same as the comb bus bar at 63 amps. So you're not losing anything from the busing capacity going with this system. But for the end user standpoint now, again, say if this starter was to fail, I can pop off this connection piece here and remove this separate starter, and this one can still be under power, and this is all touch safe design, yeah. so you're allowed to do it uh, in, your, in your panel space. So again, you have the modularity and the cost effectiveness for the panel shop, but now it's, it's a great benefit for our end users without any loss of deduction for ampacity uh, for replacing failed units in the, in the field. Okay, so used in the, the industrial world, then that, that will reduce downtime significantly where you don't have to maybe bring the, the whole process to a stop to actually do something in the panel you can isolate particular areas and work on those? Correct. Uh, another uh, feature of this system is the commonality of accessory items. Say if I wanted to add a auxiliary contact block onto our system, okay? Here's the, uh, the smaller system. If I plug this on to this module and snap it on, okay, works great. This yep. same accessory now can also be snapped on just as easy on the larger contactor. Okay. And not only can I use this same accessory on the 10 horsepower or the 25 horsepower, okay, I can also do it on a 50 horsepower and a 75 horsepower starter that I'll show here a little bit uh, down, the, down the conversation but common accessories across different size motors, okay, will greatly increase, again, the familiarity on the panel shop side to know how to mount them and how to use them, okay? And, and also having top-mounted accessories allows you this nice close side-by-side -side, uh, assembly. And again, I can remove this separate starter and not impact any of the wiring or the assembly of the adjacent starter. So okay. again, from a modular design, we really put a lot of thought into uh, the components uh, for this system. So that also leads to the the kind of thought then of the the common accessory. There, there's less cost in in terms of uh, inventory, uh, the reliability and the quickness of actually getting those uh, accessories integrated. You only have to consider one of the accessories and it can go across multiple applications, yeah? Absolutely. And again, it, the benefits are both mechanical, you know, they're they're used to how they mount and how they uh, dismount, and they're used to them electrical. It's the same terminations. So they know the wiring numbers. They know how to do it on a smaller starter. They'll know how to do it on a larger starter. The okay. consistency will, will reduce time, again, up front for the panel shop, and also at the end user when they're doing a maintenance mode and, and they're trying to replace things, you know, there's consistency for them as well. Okay, could you just maybe just re recap a little bit on the, the Siemens Sirius uh, modular systems, the uh, switching and protection components, what would be the, the main parts of the family that you could call out uh, and the benefits of those within the control cabinet as well? Okay, uh, I, I touched on a lot, you know, a, right now until say for the, the 10 horsepower and say the 25 horsepower uh, size family, okay? One of the things, and I talked about the accessories, you know, being consistent. Another thing that's consistent for the system is, and I talked about reduced wiring for the three phase power side. What we can bring into the, the play now is reduced wiring on the control side, okay? Better flexibility as to you know, how do I wire it to these contactors? 
to be able to turn them on and off? How many wires does it actually take to uh, activate the control sequence you know, for a starter? If you, if you look at a, a traditional starter, okay, hardwired, it's gonna take five wires to, per starter. It's gonna be two wires to turn the coil on and off for this starter, two wires to look at the aux contact yeah. as feedback to say, hey, the starter is on or off, and then a fifth wire to look at the fault uh, condition. You know, is it tripped, is it shut off? Five wires per starter. And what we've been able to do is implement a communication technology now onto our existing starters. And now by adding this communication module, it's a three wire connection for the communication. And now I'm replacing, say for one starter, I'm replacing three wires instead of five. Not set that big of a savings, but what you get now is the ability with this communication module is I can actually do four starters side by side, and those starters can be both direct starters, reversing starters, or two-speed starters. And now that bank of four starters with communication modules are still fully controlled and monitored with that same three wire connection. Okay. So now instead of replacing say three wires to five, I'm replacing with four starters, 20 wires with only three. With three. Okay. So you get a great reduction in the wiring time for the uh, panel shop on their system. Okay. You're not cutting all the wires. You're not terminating all the wires. You're not labeling all the wires, right? And for the end user, you're going to have just as much control and improved diagnostics off yeah. the system than your traditional starter. Part of this uh, functionality of this communication module, it actually has a, a, has a voltage measuring circuit that can now go in and measure the voltage across phase A and phase B. So not only can you do the same diagnostic signals that I talked about before, you now have added functionality uh, with this solution. And when I talk consistency, <coughs> excuse me, not only can I add this COM module to the 10 horsepower or the 25 horsepower system, I can still add that communication module to a 50 horse system right mm -hmm. on top of that contactor, as well as uh, my larger system. Which will go up to 75 horsepower, and I can still control it. And still control the system. So consistency across the line, you know, from a communication standpoint, is also available with this system. Now, this module is a, a digital-based system. So again, digital on-off signals, digital feedback. But for a lot of customers, a simple uh, request that they have is how do I get motor current back off of this starter? What's required to do, to do that with your system? And with our system, we have a very cost-effective monitoring relay yeah. that supports the same communication scheme as that digital module that I just plugged on called IO Link. And now with this monitoring relay here, again, I can directly couple it on the bottom of this contactor. And now not only will I easily get back motor current as max current, but I also can get back the individual currents, phase asymmetry. I can get back a hour meter, number of starts. There's about a dozen analog signals that can be brought in off of this single monitoring relay for this setup. And I have this monitoring relay available not only for the 10 horsepower system, but I have it for the 25 horsepower system. And as shown here, yeah. the 50 horsepower system. And if you look at the majority of the motor starters in the panels today, the majority of them are 50 horsepower or below. Yeah. And our competitors, in order to, a lot of times, to offer that uh, motor current uh, value, they're going to put a similar monitoring relay below here that's going to have an Ethernet port plugged into it. So 
if you have several starters in your panel, each one of those starters are going to consume an individual IP address. Absolutely. And they may not have that many IP addresses available to them. Me personally, I'd rather use those IP addresses on the larger systems, the PLCs, the variable frequency drives, the HMI panels, yeah. not one per motor starter. And mm -hmm. so with our concept, you know, say if you had 25 motors, I could have 25 of these monitoring relays all going back to one IP address for the majority size uh, starters that you have in your system. Yeah. We talked about the bus system here on the smaller ones. For the larger frame uh, starters, we have a larger frame busing system that we refer to as our fast bus system, yeah. where we can mount these larger uh, starters on this type of a shoe, and then this shoe will sit on a rack that I have back here of three uh, power terminals. Yeah. And so for very high opacity type systems, you can still have your starters, you can still have your communication, but and you still have your modularity that if one of these was to fail, it's easy to replace off the system. You yeah, know, even from the high uh, ampacity uh, starters. Great. A lot of the the things that we've talked about today, obviously, has been aimed at helping the panel builders, the engineer, and the end users. I was just going to finish off maybe by asking about some cutting edge capabilities within the the, the panel uh, systems, but just want to go back to your digital. IO link. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm more familiar with IO link being used in the world of automation sensors, but it looks like you're bringing IO link into the control cabinet. Is that right? Absolutely. Siemens not only offers the IO link technology out on the machine, like a lot of the other manufacturers do in, you know, in sensors and in masters uh, uh, modules uh, for that application, but the controls product group, which I'm part of, uh, who lives with the motor starter technology, as you can see, we made a decision to use that same open technology inside the control cabinet. And so now we've applied that technology not only on these, say, starters for communication or with the monitoring relays here with the starters, but I have a whole uh, suite of monitoring relays uh, that are all IO link enabled for three phase current monitoring, voltage monitoring, uh, speed detection, temperature detection all have IO-Link connectivity inside the control cabinet. And again, for two main benefits. For motor starters, you can really reduce your wiring uh, for multiple starters. And for the analog signals now, it's a much more cost-effective way to get multiple analog signals that are already scaled into a digital format into your control platform at a very cost-effective price. So the panel shops like it because, again, it reduces their wiring and gives them a uh, another way of satisfying the needs for their end customers at a faster rate. Um, but the end users really like it again because of the additional diagnostic and operational data that the monitoring relays uh, and the modularity you know gives them uh, to reduce their time downtime. So really taking again an open technology into our product line really offers our customers some some really good benefits to to reduce their costs. Okay, great. What I'd like to do is I'm just going to finish off by going back to where we started. So the original question I, I asked at the beginning was about motor starters uh, control systems being at the heart of uh, the industrial manufacturing environment and what is the benefit of having quality product. And through the whole of the conversation that we've had today, I think you have more than answered that for me. And I, I'd just like to thank you for having a, a really good discussion with with design spark about uh, motor starting protection control cabinet design so john thanks for your time today and i hope we talk again real soon i really appreciated the time today i thank you for for offering us the opportunity to uh, to do this um we're really excited about this product line we really like working with our customers and we get a lot of positive feedback from our customers so um again thank you for this opportunity and uh Looking forward to uh, talking with you some more. Okay, take care, John. Have a good day.